Odie? You ready to go? Come on, let's go! Come on! Welcome to Jeremiah's Fifth Ministries, a place where you can grow in God's Word. Corinthians 5 7 have been our opening scriptures. And 1 Corinthians 5 7 says it like this For we walk by faith, not by sight. And we said last week we were talking about this, you know, that when you're walking by faith and you're walking not by sight, and it also means, you know, your faith has nothing to do with your feeling you see out there. No, no, no. You know, it could be totally different. Amen. If, for instance, if you're sick today, you know, and you're still in pain and you're believing God for, you know, your healing, you know, the, you're still speaking the things of faith, you know. Well, you may still be in pain right now, you know, but that's that's just the symptoms. Amen. Those things are going to change if you believe in God and you're trusting God, you know, so you don't walk by what you see. Amen. Maybe today your circumstances look really rough, you know, and you're speaking the right things for those things to change, you know, and you're believing in God for those things to change. You don't walk by what you see. Amen. You walk by what you believe. Amen. Your persuasions, your firm persuasions. Amen. Your faith. Amen. You walk by your faith. Amen. Not by what you see. Amen. And you know, it's easy <laughs> to look by what you see. That's what the world does. You know, they look by what they see. That's what's the difference between us and Christian or the world and Christians is that we look not by what we see. We, we go by what we believe. Amen. And, you know, and it's and that's, you know, challenging for some people, you know, because they want to go by their emotions. They want to go by how they feel. They want to go by what the world said today, what the what what you see in the economy, you know. But we go by what the Bible says. Amen. That's for we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Notice here we walk by our faith. Amen. Hebrews 10, 38 says, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul have no pleasure in him. But so notice here he says we live by our faith. Amen. We, we're supposed to live our lives of faith. Boy, if we're supposed to live our lives by faith, supposed to walk by faith, and wow, you know, we need to know some stuff about faith. Amen. And this is what your Bible says. Hebrews eleven six says, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if you're going to please God, you got to have some faith. Amen. You need to be firmly persuaded of some things. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Notice he says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. What is he? He's your everything. Amen. He's your, he's your comfort. He's your healer. He's your teacher. He's your source. What are you supposed to believe about him? He's your everything. Amen. He's your everything for your life. And believe you me, if you're free hearing this for the first time, he can be your everything. Amen. He can be everything you need. Amen. You don't, you know, you, you can have some friends and you can have some things that you do like in this world, but God's your source for everything. Amen. You know, that deep life. Amen. Uh, whatever you, you feel like you need to be doing that purpose that he's, he's the one that'll help you fulfill that purpose that he gave you. Amen. He put that in you. He, he created you special and put that purpose in you. Amen. And he wants to help you. He's your creator. Amen. He's your source. Amen. No other God can say that. Little G's, they can't say that. He's the creator of everything. Amen. He said you can just, the Romans says you can know him by just looking at all the stuff around you. Amen. Because all the stuff around you, you can see how he's so awesome. Okay. And this plant actually opens up and it catches bugs. It opens up and it catches bugs. And it has this way of catching them where they can't get away. You know, who could create something like that? No, I, you can say all you want to that, you know, some other weird uh, created being uh, is God. But no, God is God. And he's created everything and everything's unique and special to how he does things. He's, he's amazing. Amen. You look at how all the things in the earth, you look at a flower, or you look at a tree, and amazing, it takes a big tree and puts it in a little seed. <laughs> Amen. You look how it produces fruit and all the things that you need and make sure that you have the fruit of the earth that you need. 
how a banana produces, you know, how you can get all the bananas you need. You know, you, you think about all the things God's created and everything's unique and special, you know, and he's the creator of everything. He didn't just create trees and everything. He's the creator of everything. Amen. And, you know, you think about that, you know, he can do, he has no problem taking care of you. Amen. And he's your source for everything. Amen. You know, he, he wants to take care of you in every way. He wants to make sure every need is met. He's faithful. Amen. And he wants to take care of you. We talked about that a little bit last week about how he's faithful and he wants to take care of you. But without God, it's faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh him must believe that he is. And what else does it say that you must believe? It says that he is a rewarder of him that diligently seeks him. Amen. You have to understand, you know, you don't just believe in the promise, you know, but you need to know some things about his character. Amen. He's a rewarder. Amen. Yeah. The Bible says talking about wisdom, you know, it's like it's wide open and you can a wide open hand and you can take it. I heard that definition one time liberally, you know, you can have wisdom liberally in the first chapter of James. It talks about, you know, and, you know, he, he's not holding back wisdom from you. He wants you to have it, amen. He's a rewarder of those who seek him, amen. He said, if you draw nigh unto me, I'm going to draw nigh unto you. You know, he's not running from you. <laughs> he's not trying to stay away from you, amen. And, you know, you can pray to some tree or you can pray to some other thing, and those things never show up. But he says, if you could draw nigh unto me, I'm going to be there, amen. And believe you me, he will be there, amen. He's going to be there to help you every time you need help. He's going to be there with every challenge that you face, amen, because he will be there. You draw nigh unto me, and I'll draw nigh unto you, amen. And you need to make sure that you're taking the time to do that. Make sure that you're drawing nigh unto him. You say, well, I don't feel him today, or I haven't felt his presence in a lifetime. Well, you know, are you drawing nigh to him, amen? And he wants to make sure that you have what you need, praise the Lord, amen. Amen, you know, people right before they have an accident or they have a challenge, you know, and maybe call out to God right away. You don't think he shows up? <laughs> oh, yes, he does. He shows up and he's faithful. Amen. He loves every person. You know, he even loves the world. You know, you look at first John in the first chapter and the second chapter there. He said that he gave his life for not just you. He gave it for the world. It's just that they won't accept him. You know, he loves the world. He gave his life for the world, forgave the world. Amen. But uh, you have to accept him. It's through Jesus. Amen. He loves the whole world. Not just every one of us, you know. I mean, I like to say I'm God's favorite, you know, just like Jerry Seville talks about. He's God's favorite. You know, I say that I'm God's favorite, you know. But, you know, just because, you know, we we feel that way because of our personal relationship, it doesn't mean that he doesn't love the whole world. He loves the world. Amen. He died for the world. And he wants them to have everything that they can possibly have. And he's he sent his son so that they can have everything that they can possibly have in their lives. But they just have to accept Jesus. Amen. Jesus is your everything. He's, he's your source of everything. He made sure that you had everything. Amen. For your life. Amen. And all that's in here, praise the Lord. Amen. So without faith, it's impossible to please him. So we notice here we walk by our faith, we live by our faith, we please God with our faith, and we also receive from God with our faith. So this is an important issue, isn't it, that people understand faith, you know? And it, most people have faith and they don't even realize it, you know? But they just need to learn what we're talking about today about releasing faith. That's probably the biggest problem with most people is they just don't understand some aspects of faith and they don't understand to talk about all those things. But it's important that you understand you got to have some. Amen. And you don't get some unless I talk about it or somebody talks about it. Amen. And you're going to learn more about that. We'll talk a little bit more about that today. So we, we've talked about what faith is and what we said faith is meaning for it. It's a firm persuasion. It's a belief. It's a conviction based on what you heard. Amen. Think about that now for a minute. It's basically an accumulation of knowledge from what you've heard causes you to be firm persuasion and firmly persuaded. Amen. And God wants you firmly persuaded about him. He, he said that you must believe that he is. Well, 
How do you believe that he is? You get in his word and you hear about him through his word or you hear about him through ministers teaching, you know, and you get firmly persuaded. Amen. And once after a while you spend time and faith comes by hearing, you know, we talked about faith comes by hearing and acceptance of truth. Once you accept it as truth and you're persuaded, you've got some faith. Amen. And now this isn't a tough process and people make it sound like it's a tough process, but it's not. And you don't need a whole bunch of it, you know. Matter of fact, Jesus said you can have not even a whole lot of it, you know. But it's the biggest issue with Christians is releasing your faith. And we're going to talk about, you know, it doesn't take very much. Matthew 7, 20 says, And Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, uh, for verily, verily, I send you, if, if you have faith, is the size of a mustard seed. You know, mustard seeds are very small. We talked about this last week. It's one to two inches and or one to two millimeters is how big they are. They're very small. They're not big at all, you know. And uh, you think about that, you know, that you couldn't get a lot of protein out of a mustard seed. Praise the Lord. You know, I like to eat a bunch of different nuts mixed together, you know, for protein, you know. I probably wouldn't get a lot out of a, a mustard seed, but it's one to two inches and one to two millimeters is how big a mustard seed is. So he he looked for one of the smallest seeds and he said that you don't need a whole lot of faith is what he's, he's trying to tell you. It doesn't take a lot. You know, you don't have to have a bunch of faith. You don't have to, you know, just sit to move, get your life going the right direction to get your healing. You don't have to have a whole bunch of faith. You just have to have some faith. Amen. And, you know, I can't, you can't expect to have faith without hearing. And you've got to hear some things and you've got to get persuaded about some things. Look here at, um, well, let's look at this real quick. Uh, let's look at how fast faith comes here. In Mark, the fifth chapter, the 25th versions, and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, uh, but rather grew worse. But when she heard of Jesus, think about this now. It's saying that she heard of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. She'd been hearing about how some folk have been getting healed. Some people have been getting healed, you know. It's like, man, they're just getting healed left and right, you know. You know, she flipped on YouTube and she's like, wow, man, this guy's healing all kinds of places. He, she grabbed the newspaper and she's like, oh my goodness, he's healing everywhere. He's coming to my, coming my way, you know. Uh, she'd heard from some people, you know, that attended a few of his meetings. That she, Man, you've got to go. You're going to get your healing if you show up there. Amen. So she got persuaded by all the facts. Amen. She got firmly persuaded by what she heard. It was an accumulation of knowledge that she got. And she became firmly persuaded. Amen. That's how faith comes. It comes by hearing. And of course, we pointed out acceptance of truth, you know, because his hometown, they didn't accept it. You know, they may have heard all kinds of things. They knew about him as he grew up and they knew about him when he went into the temple there in the fourth chapter there and told him who he was, you know, but they weren't willing to accept it. They watched his whole life and they weren't willing to Hey, man, then you need to release it. And that's exactly what this lady did here. She heard, she accepted it, and she decided she's going to release her faith here. We're going to look a little bit at it. And straightway, the fountain, she, let's see. And she said, I, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. So she was persuaded that even if she didn't even touch him, she touched his clothes, she was going to be healed. And it sounded like she'd heard the message that Jesus was preaching about Luke 4, how he was anointed with the spirit and power. She must have heard about that message that he had been preaching, amen, with, with healing power, amen. And that's what the gospel is today, amen. We're called Christians because we're anointed with that spirit of, of anointing upon our lives and power, amen. You may be listening and you may look down, you may get healed right now because the healing of power of God's anointing is on me right now, amen. And his Holy Spirit's touching you through with the camera or touching you through with hearing this message. He's persuading you. Amen. And that power is touching you right there where you're at. You can be on a bicycle. You can be on a motorcycle. You can be in a car. You can be at home sitting on your couch. You can be, you know, outside listening to this, you know. But I believe the Spirit of the Lord will go right there where you're at. You know, the Bible talks about how he, he hovers over the Word. Amen. He's everywhere at one time. And God's everywhere at one time. He can be on the other side of the planet. He can be right here where I'm at. He can be everywhere at one time. Amen. And that's the Holy Spirit. And he's there touching you right there. He'll get there right there on your bike with you. He'll get there right there on your motorcycle with you right there in your car with you. Amen. He'll get there right there in your living room with you and help you and heal you right there where you're at. If you just let him right now, praise the Lord. Amen. He wants to touch you. He wants to change you. That power is burden removing. 
It's yoke destroying power. Amen. And it heals body. Praise the Lord. And he's healing people right now. I believe you. And then when we're talking, amen. Amen. And just like this woman, she said, I didn't have to touch him, but she knew there was power in his clothes. And she said, if I may touch, but his clothes, I shall be whole. Amen. And some of you may be listening, you know, you say, well, if I just, if I just, uh, if you need to touch the screen or touch whatever you're listening to, you know, you can be whole. Amen. There's anointing going through it. Amen. And he's touching you right there where you're at. And straightway, the fountain of blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That anointing and that word just touched her and healed her right there where, where she's at. You know, the word will touch you right there and just heal you right there where you're at. There's anointing on his words. Amen. Amen. And, and Jesus, merely knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of his body, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And he looked and about to see her that had been done, had done this thing. Uh, but the woman feared and trembling, knowing that what, what was done in her came and fell down before him and told him all the truth and said unto her daughter. And he said unto her daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Notice it wasn't just her faith, though. Amen. She was persuaded about some things. Remember we talked about she heard some things? Amen. There's people with faith today. They've heard some things. They've heard for a long time about Jesus' healing, how he wants to prosper them, and how he wants to help their lives and help them fulfill their purpose, you know. And you can hear about all those things until you you just you, you can't stand it anymore. You know, there's people sit in church today. They've heard those things over and over and over. And it's not a faith problem that they have. Amen. Faith comes easy. She got it quick. No, she heard some things and man, she was out there. She got her healing right away. It's, it's not a hard process to get faith. Amen. It's the process of stepping out and releasing your faith that people need to get a hold of. You know, if you want to fulfill your purpose, you need to do some things. What's he leading you to do today? Amen. And if you want to fulfill your purpose, you've got to do some things yourself. You can't just sit there on a the couch. You can't just sit there where you're at in the pew, you know, to release your faith. Well, the number one thing he leads us to do when it comes to releasing our faith is that we have to heard some things, you know, this lady heard some things, you know, and you can't be responsible for it if you hadn't got it, heard anything. You need to be persuaded of some things. Acts 19.2, I'll give you an, for an example real quick. In Acts 19.2, he says, he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. Well, these people aren't going to have any faith if they haven't even heard. Amen. You got to hear some things. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They got to hear the message of the Holy Spirit. They got to be hear the message of the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. They got to hear some things or they're not going to believe it. You know, I mean, uh, you know, there's a lot of people preaching salvation. They don't preach what comes after it, the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's exactly what comes right after the four Gospels and Acts, the second chapter. They were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Well, that's an experience that you can have if you hadn't heard about it. And how people throughout the Bible and the book of Acts, you know, I believe it's eight accounts, seven or eight accounts. You see where they get saved and they get baptized with the Holy Spirit and Speaking in tongues, this was something that was normal, amen, that you, you got saved and you got baptized with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Well, you can't be expected to know about it or have that experience if you haven't heard about it, amen. Now you may have heard about me talking about it, and now you're persuaded and you'd like to have that experience, amen. But, you know, you have to hear. You got to hear some things, amen, so that you become persuaded, that you form a belief that they act on it, you know, and if it's a purpose that God's given you, and, you know, you have to act on what he's telling you. What is he telling you, leading you to do? Are you supposed to charge, start church now, go to Bible school now? Are you supposed to Are you supposed to listen to some messages now? I remember Jerry Seville talking recently. I was listening to him do a message, and he was talking about how the Lord asked him to take some time and study, you know. That's exactly what uh, Paul did. He took some time, and he studied before he went out and, you know, just started ministering to people. He started studying the Scripture, you know. we got to study and show ourselves approved, you know, praise the Lord. What's he asking you to do? Or maybe you're already at that place, and you've been studying for a long time. What's he telling you to do now? Start a church or uh, do something different, you know? Or maybe if it's a start a business, you know? Or maybe you're a singer. Maybe he's telling you, well, hey, you need to get those songs recorded. You know, what, what's he telling you to do? Amen. We have to release our faith. Amen. You can't just believe some things and never do anything. Amen. Amen. You have to do something, you know, and we have to release our faith. We're going to get a lot into releasing our faith. But if you're not persuaded, and this is uh, kind of what I've been 
pretty much raised on Mark 11, 23 and 24. You know, Brother Hagin's schools where I came from, uh, you know, I went to Brother Tom, it seemed like he taught on Mark 11, 23 and 24. So you'll hear me teach quite a bit on that. And, uh, but you know, it's important though, you understand Mark 11, 23 and 24, if you want things to happen in your life, amen. Mark 11, 23 says, for verily I say, you shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So he's saying you got to have, some, if you're going to believe some things, which is actually the same definition for faith. <laughs> if it, what do we say faith was? It's a firm persuasion. It's a belief. It's a conviction based on what you heard. Amen. It's a conviction. Of, it's accumulation of knowledge to cause you to be persuaded. Amen is what it is. And uh, if you're not persuaded, this, you can't do these things in the scriptures. What he's telling you is, for verily I say unto you, that whatsoever you shall stand to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea, and that shall not doubt in his heart, but believes. What is doubt? Doubt is not being persuaded. Amen. Doubt is not having a firm persuasion is what it is. Amen. So before you start speaking to things, you've got to be firmly persuaded. You've got to know some things about it. Amen. You've got to have an accumulation of knowledge to be able to release and speak to your mountain, praise the Lord. And words are the number one way to release your faith. That's where you need to start. Amen. With releasing your faith. And we're going to talk about other ways to release your faith. There are many other ways to release your faith. But the number one way is releasing your faith is words. Amen. This is how God releases his faith all the time. Amen. And this is how he does things. He created this world with his words. Amen. He created you, I believe, with his words. He created everything with words. Amen. We're about to look at a scripture that talks about that. Amen. His, your words are so important to you. You have no idea. He's talking about your words. He's not just talking about God's words, is he? Jesus is talking about your words. And he said, whosoever, that's talking about all of us. <laughs> Amen. He's talking about all of our words are important. Amen. People just don't understand. I really don't believe we even have a relation of how important words are. Words change your life. Amen. Words get you out of situations into good situations. Amen. Words cause things to happen for you. Amen. But you've got to be able to get a hold of that, you know, and get control of your words. Amen. You know, you need to get rid of the bad words and just be using the good words. And that takes some self-control, which is a fruit of the spirit. Then uh, you can help but have self-control by speaking the right words. Amen. Amen. So we release, it was bef before we release our faith, you must believe. Amen. See, before you start speaking things, it's not just the words that you, hated that you say. Amen. That's what causes things to happen in your life. And like we said, it's not hard to be persuaded about things. It's, it doesn't take a whole lot of faith, but it's like I can click my heels all day and say, I'm an astronaut. That doesn't make me an astronaut. Amen. It doesn't make me an astronaut. It's what we believe, what we say. Amen. You have to believe what you can be firmly persuaded about you, what you say. Words are the number one way to release your faith. Amen. Amen. I remember this story with uh, my son was, he's watching, well, both my sons have actually watched that show, Drake and Josh. You know, I've watched lots of kids shows because I have, I have two kids, you know, and I'll never forget, you know, on Drake and Josh, you know, that they, uh, they decide they're going to dress up like doctors, you know, they were in a hospital, you know, and they dressed up like doctors, you know, pretending to be doctors. Well, it was a whole different thing when they got in there and they had to actually do a surgery, <laughs> you know, like, whoa, now, wait a minute, we've gone too far here. And, you know, they're like, well, go ahead, doctor you know, perform the surgery, you know, they had the masks on, so they didn't recognize them, you know, and they're like, well, realize who you are, and be persuaded about the things you need to say before you say them, amen, amen, and just because I say I'm a doctor doesn't mean I'm a doctor, <laughs> amen, just because I say I'm an astronaut doesn't mean I'm an astronaut, amen, and you know, you have to be, you got to have some persuasion about it, amen, you know, say, well, man, I can say, well, I know a lot about the Bible. Well, why do I know a lot about the Bible? Well, I've spent a lot of time with the Lord, number one, but I've also had Bible school. I've, I've had some college, you know, I mean, I know quite a bit about the Bible because I've, I, that's my background. Amen. Amen. And you, and you today, you know, you need to be firmly, firmly persuaded about things before you say them. Amen. I can say easily I'm a minister because I'm persuaded. Amen. And what do you pretend? Well, faith cometh by hearing and and hearing by the word, what are you hearing from the word today? Praise the Lord. Who is the word? Jesus is the word. Amen. Amen. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Let's look at this real quick here. <coughs> Excuse me there. Romans 10, 9 and 10. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, 
thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, it's the most important thing you'll ever do in your life. And, and God knew this before he had you do it. You know, the most important thing you'll ever do in your life and accepting Jesus Christ into your life, he wants it to come out of your mouth. Amen. So words are important to our lives. Amen. Words are cause things to happen. Amen. And notice about that. He says that you need to be persuaded about a couple of things about that before that even comes to happen in your life. He says that you got to believe God's risen Jesus from the dead. And you got to believe Jesus is Lord of your life. You got to be persuaded that He's risen from the dead, and you got to believe that that he, that He's Lord of your life, that He's Lord. Amen. And you, so you got to be persuaded about a few things about that before you even confess it out of your mouth. Notice he's, he's showing you a pattern here. This is how you get things to happen in your life. This applies to everything, doesn't it? Amen. To release your faith, you got to do something. Amen. You have to do something. The number one way is by releasing your words. That's why we have coffee with confessions. And that has to do with speaking the word throughout your week, you know, making sure you're making the right confessions for your week. That's why we do that. Amen. I, I know the value of words. Amen. The most important thing you'll ever do in getting saved, God wants you to use words. Think about that now. He didn't tell you to release your faith another way, which you can release your faith in other ways, but he made sure you understood up front, this is how we're going to do things. We're going to use words. And God uses words in so many ways. They're powerful. Amen. Let's look at Luke 7, a whole series on confession. And it has to do with speaking words. Amen. Luke 7, the first chapter here, and this was actually one I open up with a lot in that uh, series. It says, now when he had ended all his sayings in, in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum, and a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, notice what he heard, happened there. He heard of Jesus. He got persuaded about Jesus. Amen. Faith came into him. Amen. What do we say faith was? It's a firm persuasion. Yeah, you'll hear me say it a lot. Why? Well, you know, when I'm redundant, amen, you're not going to forget it. Amen. I want to be redundant. I want you to hear it over and over again, because this is one of the most important things that you'll ever need to know. This will help you when nothing, when you, you can't figure out what else to do. Amen. You can trust in your faith. Amen. And God can use your faith. And uh, remember, he was talking about how he went to... Uh, this person's house, and they were at the er verge of death. They were about to die. And uh, they said, well, can you come by and pray for this this lady? She's at the verge of death, you know. And he went over to pray for this lady, and he went over to, to the lady's house, and, man, she looked bad, you know, and she could die at any moment, he was saying. And the first thing he started telling her, she said, uh, she said to him, she said, Brother Keith, I can't eat, and I can't keep things down. You know, I, I, can't, I can't eat my food. I can't keep things down. And I feel so weak, you know. And he said, well, we'll start here real quick. And he said, he said, I want you to start saying this right now. He says, I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And she said, I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And he said, that's good. That's good. He said, and it would take him a few minutes before she could do it again. You know, about five minutes later, they would say it again. And he would say, let's say it again. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. She said, I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. See, she's speaking it and it's starting to connect with her and, and the inside. She's speaking. It. Amen. And then he'd wait a little bit, you know, and because she was very weak at the time, you know, and he'd say, say it again. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Well, he kept saying that and they kept having her repeat it. And she would say it. And after a while, she's standing on her feet and she's yelling it. I'm strong in the power of his might. Think about that. She's speaking it and it's causing it to come to pass. Amen. Now he said, you know, don't ever say again, I can't keep anything down when you eat. She said, what? He said, don't ever say it again. I don't want to hear it out of your mouth. Don't ever say it again I, I'm not, that I can't keep it down. She said, what? He said, I don't care if you, if you threw up. He said, well, you say, when I eat, it stays down. She, <laughs> she said, what? She said, even when I throw up? He said, yeah, even if you threw up, he said, when I eat, you say, when I eat, amen. And she said, okay. So she started confessing that, you know, 
and he left and it had been some time after that, you know, and, and he can't, he heard from somebody after that, after a little while, he said, hey, did you pray with this lady? And he said, yeah, he did. He said, man, she's gained 20 pounds and she's doing real good. <laughs> she started changing her confession. Think about that now. Maybe you're in a dark circumstance right now. You've got to change what you're saying, man. You're going to have to say some things and start there. Amen. You're going to have to do some other acts, you know, and stepping out and releasing your faith. But you got to start with what you're saying. Amen. Where you're at. Start saying the right things using your faith. Amen. So you can come out of your situation. Praise the Lord. Now, here. And when he heard of Jesus, and I'm talking about the centurion we've been talking about. He went unto him, the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy of whom he should do this. And he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went unto him, and when he was now not far from his house, the centurion sent his friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not yourself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest, uh, shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore... Neither thought I myself worthy to come unto you, unto thee, but say in a word, my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say unto one, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, or he do, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these sayings, he was marveled. <laughs> do you hear of him being marveled very often in the Bible? This man marveled him. Think about that. Why did he marvel at what he had to say at him and turn him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Amen. He was talking about this man here because he was persuaded by the release of words, things would happen. Amen. There's quite a value in, in what this man did. He understood when you released your words, things happened. Amen. Amen. You know, in, in your life, you know, when you start valuing the releasing of words in your life, things are going to start happening. Amen. You, But you've got to become a person that values, amen, faith-filled words and being released in your life. Amen. you got to be a person that's dedicated to it. No matter when you get up, how you feel, how things look, you got to be a person that's dedicated to using your faith with your words every day. Amen. you got to be a person that's willing to do it every day, no matter what you feel like. And how the day is going that you're using faith-filled words every day. Amen. We live by what we say. We live by our words. We're we live by our faith. Amen. Amen. We got to be people that you that value words. He understood words got things done. Amen. In his life. Amen. And you know, in your life, you've got to value words. Amen. You've got to come to the place you value words. And you don't just let things come out of your mouth. There's some things I've I've said before, you can't beat me to get me to say. Amen. Because I value words. You got to value words. Amen. Because words are powerful. Amen. And the devil loved to get you to say certain things. He loved to get you to do things that with your words that cause just horrible things to happen in your life. But he can't make you do anything. I've told you this before. He can't make you do anything. Amen. But he wants to persuade you to say the wrong things out of your mouth. Amen. He wants to persuade you to speak the wrong thing. Why? Because words are powerful. Words can affect other people even. Amen. It depends on how you use those words. Faith-filled words. If you believe it and you speak it, good or bad, those words are going to cause things to happen. Amen. You remember Jesus when he went to the fig tree? And Mark 11 there, he, back before he even he told you about the mountain, he spoke to a fig tree, you know. And they, again, he spoke to that fig tree. Don't you ever give us fruit? He's mad because he's hungry, you know. And he said, don't ever give you bear fruit again, you know. And <laughs> that's not a good thing, you know. But Jesus, you know, he used his words. And he came back and they're walking by. The disciples look over and that fig tree was dried up and it is dead. Why? Because he spoke to it earlier. Think about that. Over time, after speaking to that thing, it changed. And you know, whatever you've got going on in your life, over time, whatever you're speaking to, it's going to have some change. Some things happen right away. You're speaking God's word. Things happen right away. And, you know, it may have happened in the spirit right away, right when he did that, you know. But, it, you know, sometimes it takes a look at how the enemy uses people with their religions and things. He, he look at the words that they're trying to say and words they're trying to speak. 
the, the enemy wants to get them to say the wrong words, you know, and witchcraft and all this stuff, you know. It's because the enemy knows the power of words. Hey, Amen. He's there and he was living in heaven. He, he saw God create the worlds and he's seen how God's powerful words create things. Amen. But, you know, he understands the authority of words. And then that's where it's at. Amen. Your words cause things to happen. Hebrews 11, 3, if you don't know much about words, let's look at this scripture here, and you're going to learn a little bit about words here in Hebrews 11, 3. It says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were, were not made of things which do appear. Think about that. He formed the worlds with the words that he spoke, and God spoke out of his mouth. Wow. <laughs> if you don't think that's powerful enough, let's look at that amplified real quick here. Hebrews 11 says, by faith, that is, with an inherited trust and enduring confidence in the power, wisdom, and goodness of God, we understand that the worlds, the universe, ages were framed and created, formed, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God. Think about that. The worlds were created, the universe created. The purpose was created by the words that were spoken out of God's mouth. Wow, that's powerful to think about, isn't it? And so that what is seen was not made out of things that were visible. <laughs> so you didn't see it at first. In the Passion Translation, it says, For faith empowers us to see the universe was created and beautifully, and the invisible realm gave birth, that is, to all that is seen. <laughs> that's great, isn't it? Amen. He spoke and the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. That's powerful. Think about that a little bit. Meditate on that for a minute there. The things that you're needing in your life. Amen. You're going to give birth to them by what you say. Amen. The things that you need to happen in your life, you give birth to them by what you say. Amen. Words are powerful. Your words are being released with faith. Cause the invisible to be seen. Amen. You know, and it's important that you understand whatever you're trying to get to happen, you've got whatever you believe God wants you to do in your life, you got to start saying some things. Amen. You got to start speaking some things. You know, if Jesus paid for healing, a good example, life, stripes, so you were healed. And so you've already been healed. You've already been, it's already been paid for. And so what do you need to be speaking every day? I am the healed of the Lord. Amen. If you want healing in your life, you got to start saying it. I am the healed of the Lord. Not tomorrow. Not the next day. You need to be saying, I am the healed of a Lord now. Amen. I'm the healed of a Lord. You start speaking it. Amen. You know, you, you speak those things that need to be spoken and call for those things to be spoken in your life. Amen. Amen. You got to speak the right things, you know, you, into your life. I will fulfill the purpose that God has for my life. I always triumph through Christ Jesus. Amen. You speak what you believe and it causes things to happen. Amen. Hebrews 11, 1, we said, now, we're going to look at that scripture. And I want to go back and look at it a little bit. Because a lot of people look at this scripture and they get confused about faith a little bit. And so I wanted to break it down just a little bit here. It says in Hebrews 11, 1, it says, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's what people define faith is a lot of times, you know. But, you know, now that you know what that word means, faith, let's break this scripture down a little bit for you. And I think you're going to understand it a little bit better. That, and then the Greek word for uh, evidence is proof. Conviction is what it is. It's proof. Think about that now. Now you change the word to faith, a firm persuasion. Listen to how it reads. Now a firm persuasion is the confidence of things hoped for, the proof of your conviction of things not seen. Amen. So what is it? It's a it's a it's the confidence that you have. You're persuaded. You you become confident. Amen. When you're persuaded by faith. Amen. And it's the it's the proof of your conviction. Amen. And so you've gotten all the accumulation of knowledge, and it's the proof of your conviction of things not seen. So you've heard some things. It's the proof of your conviction. Read that scripture a little different there now. Amen. Faith is a persuasion. It's a belief. It's a conviction based based on what you heard. Amen. But us releasing your faith by words causes the unseen to be seen. Amen. If you want the unseen to happen in your life, the things you need to happen in your life, you've got to release your faith. Faith in itself is nothing. Amen. Faith, it's doormat. It won't do anything. We're going to talk more about this. Praise the Lord. 
But faith in itself, it doesn't do anything. You've got to release it. Amen. You know, if I told my wife, you know, and then I never released my faith. Amen. If that's my conviction, you know, I've got to show love. Amen. I was listening to somebody not long ago talking about how they never told their wife that they loved them, you know. Wow. Think about that, you know. And never hearing I love you, you know, but the, those words are powerful. Releasing those words are powerful. Amen. And finally, he worked up the courage and finally was able to say it to his wife, you know, and it made such a huge difference to his wife, you know. But releasing those words, if you're convicted that you need to walk in love, you know, you, in, in, in showing love and saying things out of your mouth. You know, releasing your faith, that conviction that you know that you've got from the word and you're firmly persuaded that you're supposed to love that wife or love that husband. Amen. And you're saying things out of your mouth are just they're important. Amen. It's important to say something. Amen. Amen. You say, I love you. That's a good way to release your faith. Amen. A good way to I like to tell that she's beautiful and tell her good things. Amen. But it's, I'm releasing that faith. Amen. That I love my wife. Amen. I don't just do it because the word says it, but I do love my wife, you know, and he, and he creates that within you. You know, when you have the love of God come in your heart, when you're saved, you release it in acts and the doing the things that you need to do. Amen. Releasing your faith. Amen. We're going to be talking more about releasing our faith. Praise the Lord. But words have to be released to show your conviction. Amen. To show what you believe, what you heard, what you're persuaded about. Amen. You've got to release it through words. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your goodness. And we thank you for your mercy today, Father. And Father, we just ask, Lord, as we've talked about faith today, Lord, and we ask, Lord, that you help people, Lord, to see that they have to release their faith without releasing it. It's just it's just faith by itself and it's dormant. You know, it doesn't do anything. We have to release our faith. Amen. And Father, we ask that you help people to see that clearly, Lord, and help them to this week be able to release their faith and get out of situations that they're in and help them to get in better situations. We pray, Father, this week we pray. And Father, we just ask for it in Jesus' name. And Father, we just thank you, Father, for it in advance. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. And if there's someone here that doesn't know Jesus, you're getting a chance to release your faith right now. Amen. We said all you got to do is believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. And we said that all you got to believe is that Jesus is Lord. Amen. And so we're going to pray that with you. you just repeat it after me. And I believe we'll save you right now. Praise the Lord. Some wonderful things in your life if you'll let him. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Just pray this after me. Father, I just confess Jesus as Lord of my life. I believe that you've risen him from the dead. And I just confess Jesus as Lord of my life right now in Jesus' name. Jesus, be Lord of my life in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, for it in advance in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, if you prayed that prayer, you are saved right now. Welcome to the family. Amen. And we'd love to hear from you here at Jeremiah Smith Ministries. All you have to do is email me at jeremiahsministries at yahoo.com. I'll correspond with you. I'd love to be a blessing to your life. We love you. And we want to be a blessing to you. And if you have a prayer request or a praise report, email me at that same email, jeremiahsministries at yahoo.com. I'd love to be a blessing to you and pray for your needs. God bless you. I hope that you have a wonderful day. God bless you.